Hey guys, and welcome to part three of our four part series. So in video one, we modeled a character. In video two, we applied parent rigging. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at joint rigging, okay? So we're gonna create a joint skeleton. We're gonna apply IK handles, and that kind of cool stuff, okay? So let's uh, jump in and check it out. Here we go. All right, guys, let's get started. So uh, in video one, we modeled this guy. In video two, we created the uh, parent uh, method rig. And today we're going to be looking at how to uh, create a joint rig, you know, using uh, IK handles and so forth. Now, before we do that, and uh, just to show you guys where we left off, this is our parent rig guy. And if I open up my channel box, um, I'll show you that what I did is I created two layers. This one right here is our parent rig, and the one on the right, we're going to use that as a joint rig. Now, if you don't know how to create layers like that, you select the, whatever you want to create a layer for, you go in here to layers and then create layer from selected, which will give you a layer like this. And then for example, when we're working on this guy, we're gonna go to the parent rig here, click right there, which will kind of gray out our model so we can't accidentally select it and whatnot, okay? But we're not gonna do that just yet because we need to talk about this for a bit. Okay, first of all, you see that it looks slightly different. Now, the reason is uh, because I created this guy, and what I want is for the arms and the legs to be 100% exactly symmetrical, and I want it to be straight next to the body because it's easier to position the joints that way, okay? So that's one difference. Now, you can see that this guy is now fully rigged on the left here. Uh, if I, for example, uh, take this arm, and I added controls everywhere, I can uh, you know, move that around. I can uh, go in and take that control, move it here, and so on and so forth, okay? So I can take that leg, and there you go. So that's all said and done. Now, uh, this guy, we are gonna do a joint rig, and like I said, it looks different. So why? Well, first of all, uh, when I posted the second video for this guy right here, I got a lot of comments. First of all, saying it's not a character. Well, of course it's a character. The thing is, it's not an organic character. It's not what you typically see in games and whatnot. Now, the reason why I did that is on purpose, because the parent rigging system can be used for a lot of non-organic things. Let's say you want to uh, rig a car, a window, a door, a crane, uh, something like that. Uh, a lot of that is done with parent rigging, okay? And in this case, because this is kind of a robot type deal, uh, you don't want to have organic movement. You want to have robot-like movement, which means that you know the arms hinge on certain pivot points and so forth, exactly as this model does, right? So the second comment that I got was parent rigging isn't rigging. Well, of course it's rigging. It's just not joint rigging. And I just explained to you why, right? So when you decide to uh, do a joint rig for this guy, then that means that you are going to apply organic movement to something that's not organic. And you will be flexing the model and bending the model in places where it's not supposed to bend. I mean, if you got a robot and the arm is metal, that metal is not gonna flex, right? Now, because we're gonna be doing a joint uh, rigging system today in this guy, we need to make sure that the mesh can be bent everywhere. So um, the edge flow of the model has to be um, consistent all over the model. So you can do it a couple of ways. You can do retopology uh, manually. Uh, what I did is I took it into ZBrush and did a Z remesh. So you can see that it's now consistent everywhere, all right? So with that said and done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and I'm just gonna hide our uh, parent rig here. Just make sure that's grayed out. Yeah, there we go. And we're gonna be working on this guy. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start from the side. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go in to this view. And let's just get rid of this guy. We'll just hide that completely, okay? So uh, let's see, we're gonna go in. We're gonna go to our rigging menu and we're gonna go up to skeleton and create joints. Now let's start here at what I like to call the hip joint. So we'll click here once, we'll click at the knee once, we'll click at the heel once. And actually because of the way we're now gonna model this, I'm gonna put this a bit lower and then we're gonna go out to the foot here. 
And already you can see that's one of our first challenges. If you had uh, an organic model, you wouldn't have that little ball there in the ankle and it would look a bit different, okay? Now keep in mind, this is a completely simple rig because we don't have fingers and toes and whatnot, but the principle is the same, okay? So now we're gonna check it out from the front view and you can see that we need to move that over. So we're gonna hit W, we're gonna move that, put it into place, and then we're gonna hit E to slightly rotate that in like so that's not too bad and then of course we want to have the same leg rig system set up for the other leg okay so what we can do there is we're going to go up to a skeleton and we can mirror joints we're going to open the option box here and let's see uh, i'm going to go to edit and reset settings we're going to set this to y and z and we're going to click apply and there you have it so now we have a leg rig in both legs. Now let's do the same for the arms. So I'm gonna start up here again. And we're gonna go up to uh, skeleton, create joints once again. We'll do one here, we'll do one at the elbow, one at the wrist, and then we'll bring it into the hand. There you go. Now from the front, it's gonna look different. So we're going to go in, we're going to select it, we're going to hit W, let's move that into the arm. Let's hit E to rotate that and bring that in. And there you have it, looking okay. Looking okay from that view as well. And that's the reason why you want that to be straight as possible, okay? And we want to mirror that joint uh, as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, mirror joints and the settings should be still okay. And there you have it. So that's looking okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create the, uh, the spine. So let's start in the middle from the front here. And we'll start somewhere around here. So we're going to go to, uh, where do you go? Yep, create joints. So we'll start somewhere around here. Now I want to have a joint here for bending purposes. We're gonna go up to, let's say here, we'll do one in the neck, and then we'll go up and do one top of the head, okay? Hit enter, let's have a look and see if it's all aligned properly. It looks like it is, okay. And now these need to be connected. Now, that, uh, believe it or not, is done by using the parenting system as we did before, okay? So uh, one will become the child of the other. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna select this guy, we're gonna shift to select this guy, and we're gonna P on our keyboard. As you see, it's not connected. I'm gonna select this guy, shift select this guy, P, and it's not connected, all right? Let's go in here. We're gonna go and select this one and we'll select this one. P to parent. This one, select that one. P to parent. And this is now all connected. Now, we're gonna go in and do something that is very, very tedious. We're gonna select each individual joint and we're gonna add a name for it, okay? So, uh, let's see. We're gonna take this guy right here and I'm gonna do one or two and then pause the video and then go through and do all of them, okay? Because otherwise it's gonna take forever. All right, so I'm gonna open up my attribute editor. I'm gonna hit Control A to open that up. We're gonna go in here and I'm gonna select this joint right there. And I'm gonna change the name from joint four to right underscore toe underscore joint. Okay, let's make sure that it pops up correctly in our outliner. And uh, there you go, right to join, okay? And we're gonna have to go all the way up. So I'm gonna go in and consistently name each and every joint that we have. So basically each ball section here. So that's gonna be the second one and go all the way through give them all a proper name and then i'll see you guys when that's all done okay
All right, guys, so I uh, went in and named all the joints and you can see them in my outliner on the left here and we'll just do a quick run through. So we have on the left side and as I mentioned in the previous video, whether you consider the left side what you're looking at from the front view or his actual left side, it doesn't really matter as long as you do it consistently and if you're working in a team, you kind of all agree on the same method, okay? So I'm gonna call this my left side. So that's my left toe, left heel, left knee, left hip, right toe, right heel, right knee, right hip. We got our left hand, wrist, elbow, shoulder, right hand, wrist, elbow, shoulder. We got our head joint, neck joint, chest joint, stomach joint, and we got our pelvis, okay? Now, uh, with that all selected, there's one thing we need to check which is the, um, the joint orientation. So I'm gonna select this guy and shift select and then select all of these. And I'm gonna go up to uh, display. We're gonna go to uh, transform display and turn on local rotation axes. Now, once you do that, you're gonna see an X, Y, and Z direction for your joints. Now, why is that important? Well. When you start to animate your character and you're actually using your joints, it's important that they are facing the right way, okay? Now, what you see here is that all the uh, X values are pointing from one joint to the other, if you look closely, okay? So if you go in here, for example, you see the red arrow X is pointing from this joint to the next one. Now, the reason for that is if I go into uh, skeleton and orient joint and hit the option box, I have my primary axis, so the axis pointing towards my next joint set to X, right? Now, even with that done, there can be situations where you feel that they're not pointing in the right direction, and then you have to change that. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do that. If they're just one or so, we can do it manually by simply going in, clicking on the joint, and moving it, all right? Now, the exception here is the end joints. So for example, here at the toe, this joint is not pointing towards anything because there's no following joint. But what I can do though is hit E if I want to be consistent and move it down like so. And I'll just open up my attribute editor so I can kind of see what value that would be. So that would be 180 on X. Okay. And then you change that orientation and I can do the same with this guy. Okay. So let's move that down and minus 180. So that's how you do that, okay? Now this uh, seems to be looking all right. So we can go back in and uh, we can actually turn that off. Just make sure we've got something going on here. Yeah, select them. They need to be selected. So they're all turned off, there you go. And then what we can do next is we can go and create um, handles, okay? So uh, I key handles or inverse kinetic handles, okay? So let's uh, turn off our outliner here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in to uh, skeleton. Uh, let's see, where is that thing hiding? Create IK handle, there you go. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with the wrist here. So I'm gonna select the wrist joint, which is basically this guy, and then go up and select the shoulder joint, which is this guy. So that gives me a handle. So if I hit W to move this around, and you can see that we're not, uh, we didn't bind the skin yet, but you can see doing the train thing yet, that that's working, okay? All right, so let's do the same at the other end. So we're gonna go to uh, create that key handle as well. We'll do our wrist joint. We'll do our shoulder joint. So we've got one there. We'll let G to repeat last command. Let's do the heel and the hip. And then let's go in here, hit G to repeat last command. And we'll do that heel joint. And we'll do that hip. All right. We're gonna hit uh, Q on our keyboard. Let's see here. So if we now go into our outliner, we got a number of IK handles here. And for example, if I grab this one, hit W, 
I can now move that around. Okay, and we got this one. I'll actually name them to be consistent. So there you go. We'll call this IK underscore right underscore arm. Call this IK left arm IK underscore leg and IK underscore left leg. There you have it. So that's our right arm. That's our left arm. Our right leg. And our left leg. Alrighty. So we're going to go back, 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 back. So we got the IKEA handles in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to select all of our joints, handles, and so forth. Okay, we're gonna shift select uh, this guy and we're gonna go to skin and the bind skin. Okay, so now if we grab our IK handle, let's say for the right arm, you can see that our object is moving as well. Okay, so this is our left arm, there you go. We got our right leg and we got our left leg. Now we're not quite there yet because what we need to do is to make sure that the body deforms in all the right places. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's jump into that. All right, guys. So we have our joints in place. Our joints are named. We have uh, the joint orientation uh, set up correctly. We have um, bind or bound the skin to uh, the skeleton. And we created IK handles for the arms and legs. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create some con uh, we're going to create some controls. Now keep in mind I'm not really a character guy, so I'm going to keep this limited. Okay, I don't have a bunch of experience doing this, but I wanted to share my experience with you guys uh, regardless. Okay, so I'll just uh, show you a simple way to uh, set up uh, controls for the arms and legs, and then you can uh, duplicate that process. For the rest of the character if you uh, like okay all right so what we'll do here is we're going to go up to uh, create we're going to go to nerves primitives and let's take a simple circle okay now uh, we're going to bring that over to this foot right here and let's see we're just going to hit r and kind of shape that like this and let's see hit w move it like so and then we can right click on a control vertex if we like and for example just uh, bring that up to make it easier looks like snowshoes by the way but that's fine so we got one of those and yeah we're good we're gonna select this guy we're gonna to control D to duplicate and W to move over and let's make sure that they uh, are looking okay yeah looks fine and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy, we're going to go to uh, modify and freeze transformation to make sure that that's all uh, zeroed out. The same here. And then we're going to go in and we're going to select the IK handle for the right leg, which is this guy. We're going to shift select our control and we're going to hit P for parent. Then we're going to select the IK handle for the uh, left leg right here, shifts like this guy and hit P to parent. So if that worked correctly, you should now be able to grab that control and move that leg and grab that control and move that leg. Okay, there you go. All right, let's do the same thing for the arms here. We'll go in, we'll uh, create nerves primitives. We'll do a new circle. Just to pull that up and pull that out. That's basically where we want to be, okay? We're going to hit Control D to duplicate, W to move over, and put one here as well. We're going to select them both, 
go to modify and freeze transformation to make sure they're both zeroed out and then we're going to go in and we're going to look for the ik handle for the right arm we're going to shift select this guy we're going to hit p to parent we're going to look for the i key handle for the uh, left arm shift select this guy and hit p to parent so as before we're now going to take this control and there you go and uh, there you go now, as you can see as i move this arm the body is deforming in very weird ways um, and that is why we need to do some skin painting okay so uh, that's up next here we go all right guys well painting skin weights i know that people uh, tend to hate that but it's a necessity and i'll show you why so if we take this uh, IK handle control, for example, and we move this up and down, you see how that hip and torso is affected in a big, big way? Well, we don't want that, not to that extent anyway. Okay, so we're gonna hit Control Z to reposition that. We're gonna select our mesh, and we're gonna go up to uh, skin, and we're gonna go to paint skin weights and hit the option box. Now, what you see here is a hierarchy of all the joints that we have created with all the names. And that's why it is so important. So, okay, so here's that pelvic joint. We've got the hip joint, knee joint, and so forth. And we're working our way down, okay? And so on and so forth. So what you wanna do here is you wanna make sure that the effect of the individual uh, controls is limited so it doesn't uh, distort the entire model when you're working on it, okay? So for example, this uh, pelvic area, it moves towards the, the middle and the top of the legs as well. Let's say we want to minimize that impact and the way it works is everything that's extremely white is impacted by the joint that's located there and as it gets gray, it's less impacted and black is not impacted at all, all right? Now, what we can do is we're gonna select this to paint here. We can go to uh, add, and then we have a value of zero being black and all the way up to one being white. So if you want to add white here, we can go in and paint that on. Or we can go in and we can set that value to zero and we can start to paint in black, okay? So let's uh, go in and we're gonna start to kind of look at this area here. We don't want this to be impacted. And you can spend a lot of time doing this. I just wanna do it quick and dirty. Uh, as always, it's important for me that you guys understand what it is and how it's used and not necessarily look at me doing that for a long time, okay? So we now have limited that impact, like so. And we're gonna work our way through one, let's see. So we got this uh, left hip joint, which is uh, impacting the leg quite a bit. So we don't want it to go that far, especially not down here, because we have other joints in place in that area. Let's go to the left knee. And we'll bring that out. Let's see, that looks all right. And then we got the right hip, same situation. We don't want that area impacted up here. Not to that extent anyway. Same here. Let's look at that knee joint. That's going all the way down here. We don't want it to go that far. And uh, let's see, that's the heel, that's fine, and toe is fine. And then we've got the stomach area, huge area impacted here. Down here, same thing. We should have some impact down there, but not that much, okay? So chest area, let's uh, not impact these shoulders here. And let's not have the head impacted that much either. So let's say that's good. Shoulder joint, <coughs> excuse me. 
shoulder joint impacts the body a lot as you can see and that's one of the ones that I just showed you okay so let's try and limit that and I'm doing this very very fast take your time okay make sure that you do this properly uh, to get the best effect here but I just don't want you guys to be waiting too long okay so let's see what else elbow that seems to be about right although you see that there's an impact here on the body I don't want that besides that I think it's okay wrist looks about right and then our hand joint and then we've got our neck joint here uh, it's impacting uh, the head in a big way and it should impact the head as far as movement from a joint perspective but not from a skin perspective okay it's a bad thing if you move your head and then the skin on your back starts to fold that would be a bit odd right okay so the head joint itself maybe limit that to let's say about here shoulder joint that's the other one huge huge impact on that one we definitely do not want that it's uh, affecting the hip here it's affecting the back and we don't want any of that we do not want any part of that okay and even very faint gray means that there's an impact so be uh, aware of that okay all right so let's see elbow not too bad the wrist is a bit much maybe and then what do we got hand joint okay and I think that is it so um, yeah that's it guys so let's see what happens when we uh, hit the Q on our keyboard take this control right now hit W and move it let's see okay still an impact going on there all right guys well uh the skin has been uh, bound i think that's how it's pronounced yeah and uh, as you can see now if i take the uh, ik handle for my arm here uh, before you saw that the entire side of the model was impacted on the side and on the hip here same here i see some slight movement on the back of the head there i need to fix that but you can see that that is the purpose of binding uh, or painting skin weights okay so yeah that's basically it for this uh, tutorial and in the final video we're going to be doing some animating uh, but that said hopefully this uh, was helpful for you so far if you have any questions let me know of course and uh, don't forget to subscribe to see more and if you like the video please hit that like button okay see you guys next time bye well thanks for watching and before you go please hit that mh button to subscribe okay see you guys next time bye